I want to live from heaven to earth. I wonder, I wonder if we learn to live in light of eternity and heaven. For them, earth was just a place to stop by. They had no intentions of making this their homestead. This was never in their mind, in the mind of Abel and Enoch and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob. Their mentality while on this compromised planet. They never claimed, this is my home. To them, they were just stopping by. It seems to me they were very aware of life's brevity, of life's short span, and that this planet was just for but a moment. There would be a place, there is a homeland, there is a heavenly homeland, and there we will spend forever. It literally says, for instance, of the great patriarch Abraham. I mean, you don't get much more spiritual than Abraham. It says of Abraham that, you know, here he is, he's left everything he's known, his family, his, you know, the place where he was born and all of that, and he's in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a desert and sandstorms, and they're living in tents. And evidently it seems apparent to me that people probably asked old Abe, what are you doing? Are you out of your mind? And verbally it said they confessed, they articulated, they actually verbalized. Oh, I'm just here for a moment. I'm a pilgrim, I'm a sojourner. Those, that, that original language means I'm an alien, I'm a foreigner. This is not my homeland. I'm just here for but a moment. It seems to me that one of Abraham's great aides in this extraordinary journey that God takes him on is his cognizance of heaven. Heaven in the middle of the desert, in the midst of sandstorms and camping, Abraham seems to be encouraged by just the thought of heaven. So much so, he verbalized it. Oh, this isn't my homeland. He thought about it. He considered it. He talked about it. It's funny to me, it seems apparent in Scripture that if heaven will become a bigger deal in my life on this planet, I'll be far more effective while I'm here. I've found in Scripture the more heavenly minded you are, the more earthly good you will be. It's very apparent. It says in Hebrews 11, Abraham and Isaac and Sarah, and these Old Testament patriarchs, they, like I said a moment ago, they literally verbalized, we're foreigners, we're just stopping by, we're just passing through. And it says, when they said these things, they made it very obvious, verse 14, very clear that they seek a homeland, that they crave a homeland. I, I looked it up and I, I thought, I, not only do I not think about heaven much, I definitely don't crave it. Have you ever had a craving? You ever had a craving? I mean, it's, it's bizarre. Something triggers inside and it's, you are preoccupied. You are consumed. That's what by definition makes a craving. It's like you just, people are like, hello, are you, are you there? Are, whoa. Hey, hey, I'm right here. Sorry. That's all I can think about. It literally says, now it can't, it can't exaggerate. The scripture cannot exaggerate. It says that they sought after this heavenly homeland so much. It was a craving. They were preoccupied with it. It seems a lot less mysterious now to see how Abraham trusted God in the most bizarre situations. It starts to make a bit more sense, doesn't it? The whole Isaac scenario. Willing to offer his son because he craved a homeland. Heaven was real to Abraham. Heaven was real to Jesus. You know who else had a craving for heaven? Paul. No! 
God, don't misunderstand me. I just, heaven is so real to me. And I realize now that this planet, I was just stopping by. My homeland, where I belong, is in heaven with God, my Father. Heaven which will be filled. There will be no sunshine necessary in heaven, for God will be the light that will fill the vast expanse that makes up eternity. His radiance, His brilliance, His beauty will make up heaven. Somehow Paul had caught a glimpse of this and he had to pen, literally, I want to go! 